The world acclaimed author and social activist has dropped a bombshell during an exclusive interview with Plus TV Africa on DSTV 408 when he was reacting to the open letter written by former military governor of Kaduna State, Kanda Abubakar Umar, accusing President Muhammad Buhari of engaging in lopsided appointment in NNPC. According to him, the president has not been in charge of affairs in the last one and a half years. Well, I've said this before. I used the expression Rip Van Winkle, you know, when I made this statement. I don't believe that there's really anybody in charge in Asurok. I'm sorry to say this, but I've been studying the trend over the past year and a half. And I believe it very much that this president is not in charge of this nation. There's so many aspects, so many directions. I'm convinced that he's not really totally with it. Because as a responsible leader and a minister, the minister of the indicted petroleum, there should even have been an address to the nation on this. It should have formed the subject yeah. of an address to the nation. For me, it is so serious. It's not. The, it's, it's not the fact alone, but if I, we know the history of this, and then we know what it has cost the nation, and we know that it isn't over yet. And then you say you're launching a, an inquiry. No, no, that's... For more on what to expect at 9 p.m. today, we have our producer, Ikine Ezeji, to tell us more. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. What necessitated this interview? Well, uh... Again, because he's someone who is abreast of current affairs and the topical issues and always has a position on these things, um, I sought him out to find out his viewpoint. And I was, do I say, ecstatic when he said he was in Lagos. And so I invited him to join us and it was a pleasure to have him with us well, only well, yesterday. Could you expand a little on that bombshell? Aside from that one, what other ones did he drop? Well, quite a few, actually. Again, you have to admire his audacity. Um, he spoke on the African Development Bank and sort of tied it to the role America played within that whole contest, um, as well as you know, his own perspective of what Africa could do to bring themselves out of that situation. Uh, he spoke also um, regarding, apart from the, the one which we featured, he spoke to do with other matters um, currently in the news, um, to do with the George Floyd incident as well. Um, I'm trying to think, because there were several issues that we discussed alongside. I think um, we, we sort of went through some of the characters because he referenced, well, he says he was a good friend of Gambari's, but he also had something to say about his appointment as well. Um, again, that yeah, was, what, that what was surprised it. you the most about the interview? I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but mostly I, I am still surprised at how easily he, he speaks and how freely uh, someone who knows the cost of speaking his mind and still speaks his mind. And OK, I, I must say this, I'm, I'm surprised at his hope, the hope he still has for Nigeria. It comes through, in spite of the frustrations, he still believes that the youth can be the key to the salvation of Nigeria. He so really you, does. So you really want people to watch this interview You can't. Today. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be watching it, and I was a part of it. So yes, definitely at 9 PM this evening, uh, this very engaging um, interview will take place. We look forward to it. Thank you very much for giving us a sneak peek as to what to expect. Thank you very much.